Hi, this is Phil Hinton and welcome back to another video here on avforums.tv. It gives me a great pleasure to be with Laurie Fincham from THX. Now, uh, Laurie, you've been with the company for, for a number of years now. So what, what products have, have you been involved with and what kind of successes have you had with THX? Well, I've been here about 12 years. When I first came here, it was really quite early days in surround sound primarily for home theatre. And the thought was that instead of just making it a part of the market available, for the few, wouldn't it be nice if we could retain the, the essence of what we wanted, which was the highest possible quality, but we could move it into a price point where it would be available to more people. And so we developed from a high-end one, which was called Ultra, down to Select and so forth. And in many cases, we've even gone beyond that to bring new standards to desktop speakers for PCs. I, the point is, it's not about being the most expensive and the best. It's just in any category. We'd like to think, if you see our name there, you know you're going to get the best there is, or at least some thoughtful idea of what compromises need to be made in order to uh, lower the cost and so forth. Now, we discussed uh, room acoustics when we did our last video on the theatres with Andrew. Uh, but I want to ask you about the subwoofer. The subwoofer seems to be this uh, most difficult part of any home cinema package, speaker package, to get right. Um, why is that? Well, the subwoofer is, when you hear it on its own, one of the most surprising things about subwoofer is not very much is coming from it, but the little bit that is coming from it is just so important to add realism to it, you know, the size of the room and just stuff going on. And so, unfortunately, the, the room uh, has a dimensions comparable with the wavelength of sound. And what that means in simple terms is it depends where you sit in the room and where the subwoofer is as to what kind of balance that you hear. And, and obviously what you'd like to do is to hear all the bass sounds in the same relative balance as they were when they were first mixed. And so you've got to be really careful about where you put it. I mean, there are a few simple rules about subwoofers. If you want absolutely the most bass, put it in a corner and then you go and find a seat where it's, there's lots of bass. It won't be even, but there'll be a lot of it. If, on the other hand, there are more people in the room, you've got a couple of sofas or something, then you, you need to be a bit more canny about where you put it. So you may want to move it away from the corner, take the maximum level down a bit, but make it more even, not only across the frequency band, but also between the listens in the room. So somebody isn't sitting there with, ear, with blood coming out of the ears, and you can hear nothing at all. So making it even is really important. Is there a danger with how powerful a subwoofer can be in terms of the, the impressiveness of the sound that people take it a little bit too far and maybe uh, they destroy the rest of the, the sound system? Yes, you've, you, you've got to... I think it's one of those novelties. When you first get it, it's really good and you, and you, and you start thinking, wow, that's great, and you're rocking the place and so forth. But if you begin, the best way to do it, to set it up, frankly, is to sit and listen to something that you know. If you have a favorite disc, music, whatever it is, you just sit down and listen, then I would recommend, even after you set it up, just give it a little tweak and decide if that's level. Another good test is, uh, is a human voice. If you have too much bass, it goes boom, you get a really chesty sound, too thin and it sounds a bit reedy. It's amazing how good we are, humans, not only getting the right balance, but remembering what it is. We're, we're probably as good as microphones if we're listening. And so if you have your own favorite piece and you know how you liked it when you heard it on your previous ones, do that. You can always use microphones, but if you don't have them, all is not lost. You can actually do it. We're, we're pretty good at that, the, the ear and the brain. So if I was to go out and buy a THX certified speaker package, um, is that, that subwoofer automatically going to work correctly in my room and is it going to have the, the, the right integration with the rest of the speakers? What, what we would expect is that if we have certified a subwoofer, it will do objectively exactly what we intended. What is that? It will have a certain bandwidth, it will have a certain uniformity and it will have a certain maximum output capability. So we can guarantee that building block. When you get it into the room, on the other hand, a couple of things you have to do. Ideally, you'd have a THX receiver uh, because that will have a THX setting and that takes the worry out of you. don't have to worry about where I set it, it's a THX position, you know that's the right one for the subwoofer, set, set it right for the satellites too. Then you've got to make sure you position it as we spoke about earlier and you just do that and it depends really how many people are going to be listening, how important it is to get that. Also if you have things like neighbours, I mean if you have neighbours you're going to, you, you want to make sure 
that you, at ever, whatever level you have to play back at, you're going to be able to hear everything you want. You're going to need to be able to hear the dialogue. So if the bass is too high and you have to turn it down because you're worried about the neighbours, you're not going to hear the dialogue. So the words are the most important if, if you want to understand what's going on. And the subwoofer there is to give that extra dimension, the sense that you might actually be there because you're hearing all the other sounds that make it real. Now, most THX certified systems are what we describe as subsat systems, so satellite speakers with a subwoofer. Why is that? I think partly practical and partly uh, theoretical. Obviously, when it was two front speakers, that was a no-brainer. Put them on, put them on a the bookshelf or on a, on a stand. Then you, then you got three, and then you had to put the middle one there, and it had to go below the TV set or, or above it or on its side and so forth. Then we had surround speakers. So you're beginning to get uh, a bit of clutter in the room. If, in addition to that, you're requiring that all these speakers shall be full range, for example, they're going to have to get bigger. There is no way to get bass out of a box if you don't have amplification and EQ. It's just going to get bigger, so now you've got really big speakers at the back, but they're in the wrong place. The great thing about satellites is that they can go where they look right and where they give you the right imaging, and they can go in the back, particularly the surround speakers do need to be in the right place to just put them just slightly back of where, where you are. The subwoofer integrates better um, when there's just one of them because there's less confusion. Now, there may be some disagreement about this, but I think most people in the business would agree if you have one, if you find the right place in the room, you'll get really first-class integration between the low frequencies and, the, and those in the satellite. You can have a full-range rear speaker, but the chance of it being in the right place for both activities is a lot slimmer than the other way. The net result of all this is that what we recommend for people is that they use our settings for the crossover. We cross over at about 80 hertz, which is considered to be the highest frequency you can go to that you don't actually locate the subwoofer. You sh in normal circumstances, you will never hear the subwoofer unless it's making a nasty noise or unless it is, it's rattling. If you also, if you go too high, then you start to lose some of the stereo illusion. Um, you can put it in the right place, you can get the right results. It's the most practical way of getting the best possible sound from the smallest system. And in, in our opinion, it's the best way of getting sound, uh, period. Okay, so uh, that's our discussion on subwoofers. Come back for part two, uh, where we go into things in a little bit more detail.